You're listening to Menopause Natural Solutions, Episode 75, Manage Your Menopause Naturally with Marion Stewart. Welcome to Menopause Natural Solutions, your podcast for all things perimenopause, menopause and beyond. Stay tuned as your host, naturopath Jennifer Harrington, explains how to use natural therapies to find your ultimate health and happiness during your transition. Ladies, this week I have a very special guest with me. I have author of Managing Your Menopause Naturally, Marion Stewart. Hello, Marion. Hello, I'm delighted to be with you. It is so fantastic to, to have you here. You're said to be the, the pioneer of the, the natural way to manage menopause. So it's it's absolutely fantastic that we have some of your time today. So, Marion, how did you get into this space? Well, going back many years, I was working with three doctors in the UK, including my ex-husband, and they were setting up something called the British Society for Nutritional Medicine. And they had 10,000 medical papers on the non-drug approach to different conditions. I was on maternity leave and I was feeding our second baby. They didn't think I had much to do. So they gave me these 10,000 medical papers to sort into conditions. And in the process of doing that, I found 200 on PMS. And so we started to create a program for PMS, which was a huge success without any drugs or hormones. Um, Within the space of four months, eventually, 94% of the women were symptom free. And we carried on doing that until the early 1990s when the first publications, in fact, the first publication on menopause was came from Monash University. And it was a study on women who were given red clover, soy and flax seeds. And they were able to bring about similar changes in the lining of the vagina as they would expect to see on hormone replacement therapy. And so I pricked up my little ears. That was, in, that was published in the British Medical Journal, which is a respectable journal. Um, and the next year, there was a Japanese study published. And that was in The Lancet, which is even more respectable. And so we then decided to tweak our PMS program and turn it into a menopause program as well. And that was, that, that was where the menopause journey began. And we carried on helping women. In those days, it was on one-to-one. We probably started the first telehealth organization in the world without really realizing it because we literally had sometimes as many as 2,000 people asking for help a day. And so we were really overwhelmed and had to get organized to help them. And so I had a team of nurses and nutritionists who were helping people on a one-to-one basis. And and that carried on. And then in 2016, at the end of 2016, I had remarried by then. I was living in America. And I wanted to make some films on menopause. And someone showed me how to make Facebook Live films, which I'd never done before. I'd done lots of filmmaking because I had my own TV series and Um, I made films for all sorts of things, telling stories. But when it came to pointing the phone at my face, it felt a bit strange, to say the least. But actually, I made these four really basic films. And within the space of 12 weeks, over a million women saw them. And that was really a turning point because I felt that there was such incredible suffering. And from my perspective, it was completely needless suffering because we know from my five-month menopause program that 91% of the patients are symptom-free within the space of that time. And I just felt that it's all wrong, that women should be suffering this way, wrecking not just their self-esteem, but their relationships and their work life. And so we, by that time, had thousands of women in the Facebook group and they, Facebook didn't have a memory. So every time I said, how do you deal with anxiety or whatever it happens to be, it would go into the ether and no one could find it. So we were all losing the world to live. It was taking me hours and hours a week and I was really achieving very little. So in the end, we decided that we would take all the science because everything we do is based on published medical research. And we would put that science into six modules and we would create a six week course so that we could teach groups of women how to manage their menopause naturally. 
And then we could work out somehow how to scale that so we could help women all around the world. So we're on this massive global mission at the moment. It's a whole lot of fun, but it's um, not without its challenges, obviously, because these things cost a lot of money to develop the tech and so on. But we're doing quite well. So the program now, you can run it from your phone. And it's got, uh, I'll tell you all about it. In fact, the book is based on the program. It's, It's kind of like the course manual. And it's just in the process of trying to create the tech that will not only write the programs for women, but also help to motivate them as well so that we can actually reach out because we really believe that women have a right to sound information that's going to help them not just to manage their menopause and perimenopause symptoms, but also because we live so much longer than we've ever lived before. 100 years or so ago, we weren't living much past 50, so it didn't really matter. But now when 40-something represents halfway for us, we have to... Maybe not if we halfway. Want to have a quality Maybe life, one third. Exactly. If we want to have a quality life, then we need to uh, get ourselves into really good shape and prevent things like osteoporosis and heart disease and dementia in the long term. So we're looking at this 30-year journey with research. So we're looking at how we can affect everything, including productivity and efficiency and so on. Would you believe last year Forbes said that it's costing $810 billion a year globally? In lack of, of productivity? productivity yeah. Oh, my goodness. It's, it's just insane that women work all their lives competing with men successfully and then fall over at the time of the menopause. And there was a, a Mayo Clinic survey published last year on doctors and gynecologists in the U.S., showing only 7% of them felt adequately educated to help women going through the menopause. And I don't think, I think Australia is a bit bit better. I, I've spent quite a lot of time in Australia, and I think out of all the countries I've spent time in, Australia's probably got the edge in terms of better education for doctors. But even then, it's not great. The UK is no better either. And so women are left to fend for themselves. Yeah. But ultimately, from my point of view, and, and I, I'm sure you agree with me, menopause is not a disease. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a it's normal, transition. natural transition in life. It's kind of the opposite of puberty. It's nothing that needs to be medicated. It's something that, yes, we go through it and it's a roller coaster and it can be absolute hell, but it doesn't need to be and it doesn't need to be treated with medications because it's not a disease. If you get to the underlying cause, it, it can be lifestyle. So looking at, like in your book, you talk a lot about nutritional deficiencies and I 100% agree with you that take, for example, iron. If you don't have adequate iron, anything else you do is just a Band-Aid until you go back and top up your iron level. So it's about getting the building blocks right. Absolutely. We did, in, when we were just looking after women with PMS, we did five separate studies where we measured their nutrient levels. And we found that between 50 to 80% of the women had low magnesium and other nutrients like iron, zinc, essential fatty acids, calcium, vitamin D, were all in short supply. And those, as you know, are necessary for normal brain chemistry and normal hormone function. So by the time you've had a baby or two and done some breastfeeding, maybe been living life in the fast lane and not eating so well or drinking too much alcohol, your nutrient levels are in your boots. And more research has been done fairly recently, showing that literally billions of women around the world have got nutritional deficiencies. And as you get older, that gets worse. And then you've got the added whammy of having low levels of estrogen because your ovaries aren't working properly anymore. So you have empty estrogen receptor sites. And so we teach women how to consume naturally occurring estrogen, mother nature's estrogen, so that you can fool the brain into thinking you've got normal circulating estrogen again and the symptoms disappear. So it's just, it's not rocket science. And everything we do, as I said, is based on research. And it's, but I describe the program like a pie. So you have to have a bite of each segment of it. It's not, there isn't a magic pill, unfortunately. It's not a question of waving a magic wand and everything's going to be fine. And funnily enough, I was actually, years ago, um, I was in Fremantle. And I was doing a book signing at Menopause the Musical in Perth. and they if if you haven't seen that show and you ever get the chance you have to have. It's, so, it's so funny but I was I was in the foyer signing books for several days and I was listening to conversations of the women going past and basically they were saying oh been there done that got the t-shirt 
And I'm thinking, well, actually, no, you haven't, because even if you got rid of your menopause symptoms, you're still much more predisposed to things like osteoporosis, the bone thinning disease, heart disease and dementia after menopause. It's so important to learn how to meet your needs so that you can preserve your health in the long term, as well as in the immediate situation where you're overwhelmed by brain fog and anxiety and all the other menopause symptoms. Definitely, definitely. Well, with your book, the um, it's Manage Your Menopause Naturally, the six-week guide to calming hot flushes and night sweats, getting your sex drive back, sharpening your memory and reclaiming well-being. Are you okay if we have a little look inside each week to see what you cover? So yes. if we... If we start with week one, what's in week so, one? So what I've tried to do in week one, because we know about all the common symptoms, we've surveyed literally thousands of women. And we know, for example, that 96% of the most recent survey on 1,100 women showed that women are taken by surprise by menopause. And two thirds of them feel like it robs them of their life, certainly life as they knew it. So they feel that this is the beginning of the end. And the most common symptoms are things like, apart from the hot flashes and night sweats, are things like brain fog, anxiety, panic attacks, palpitations, aches and pains, vaginal dryness, um, loss of libido, insomnia. And so in week one, I take a deep dive into all of that to just give some hot tips for them to get started and have a bit of understanding about what's going on in the body and why they've got those symptoms. But just to trust me and make a few changes so that they can start to see some benefits. Actually, in the first week, usually you don't see benefits. You may even feel worse because I'm asking people to come off things like caffeine and reduce their alcohol and all those mean things that um, you need to do in order to get your thermometer back into a normal state and to sleep peacefully in the short term. So it's not a life sentence. Once we've got people symptom free, then they can phase back to a relatively normal way of eating and drinking. And for everything we ask them to give up, we always give them lots of new things to try that are enjoyable because I really believe that this has to be enjoyable to be sustainable. And so that's what week one is full of. And um, hopefully it gives people a lot of hope that they can see a light at the end of the tunnel and it isn't all downhill from here on up, which is what most women feel at the time of menopause. I think it might also be beneficial for women that haven't connected the dots that the symptoms that they're feeling may actually be be linked into their transition. They might not have put the two and two together to go, oh, you know, I'm not sleeping so well, or, oh, yes, I do have anxiety, or, oh, yes, I don't have as much energy. Little things that aren't necessarily hot flushes. A lot of women go hot flushes, menopause. They don't necessarily break it down and look at some of the other symptoms. So I think that could also be a beneficial um, oh, step. you're totally right. We, in fact, we had some films made last year. And in, in fact, Julie, who works in my team, is in the film, and as well as lots of other women who've been through my program. But one, when she came to work with me, she didn't mention that at the interview that she had brain fog. Um, but she also didn't say, which obviously she wouldn't, that she hadn't slept for more than two hours a night. And at the time, she was about 48. And she didn't associate it with menopause. And so when we developed the six-week course, she decided to follow the recommendations that I was giving everybody else. And within three or four weeks, she was actually sleeping all night and she couldn't believe it. So, it, you know, there are lots of the aches and pains and feeling 90 before your time. All of that stuff is because they're running on empty mm-hmm. and they go into what I call economy mode. You can't function normally. Our surveys show that 70% of women lose their libido. They feel switched off from the waist downwards and about 50% have vaginal dryness. Well, when you're running on empty and you're in this economy mode version of yourself, you're never going to feel well. It's not until you have this midlife refuel where you can actually get turbocharged again and come out the other end back in the fast lane, doing all the things that you enjoy in life and you can stay in good shape. It's a really good story as long as you learn to meet your needs. And that's what I'm hoping women are going to take away from this book because I've put all the research together from around the world and I've made it easy to digest in bite-sized chunks. And that's why I've split it into six weeks. So it's not overwhelming. I love that. Midlife refuel. (laughs) That is exactly what's needed. 
Yes, exactly. But most people don't know that's even possible, including the doctors, which is, I think, the saddest thing of, of all. Let's move on to week two. What happens in week two? So week two is uh, about nutritional deficiencies. It's how to detect and correct nutritional deficiencies because Mother Nature is really good at communicating to us about what we're short of. So if you look at your face and you see maybe you've got some cracking at the corners of your mouth or red patches at the side of your nose or your skin's dry or greasy or your hair's not really glowing as it used to or maybe it's even split and brittle and falling out. Your nails are dry, split and ridgy and maybe you've got some pimples on your upper arms and thighs. All of those things mean something in terms of the physical signs of nutritional deficiency. So we're setting the scene so people can actually detect what they may be short of. And then there's tons of information and food lists about foods that are rich in all those important nutrients so that they can choose the foods and drinks that they like that are going to give them a nutrient boost to help them get their nutrients into an optimum range, because that's the key to everything. If you've got low levels of nutrients, it's like building a house on marshland. You know, you're going absolutely nowhere but down. And it's just really important to get yourself back into good shape. It doesn't take that long. It probably takes from start to finish, probably about 11 weeks or so to get your nutrients back into an optimum range. I remember back in the day uh, when I had... uh, I think it was after our second baby. I think it was the same baby I was feeding when I had all those medical papers. Um, We were writing, I was writing a book with my ex-husband and we, one of us had to go on the national average consumption of junk food and measure our nutrient levels. And because I was breastfeeding, he got the short straw. And so he was at the time, he was very energetic and happy and even tempered. Um, He worked till one o'clock in the morning without being phased well, within he was trying to consume healthy food as well as the junk food, but within the space of eight weeks, we had to abort the experiment because he was like a bear with a sore head and he was really feeling shocking. And in the end, when we did abort the experiment, we discovered that his previously good levels of nutrients had actually sunk to an all-time low and two of them were in a deficient state. And we measured them on the way up again and it took 11 weeks for them to come back into a normal range. But even in six weeks on the program, women find that they're midway with the refuel, they can feel a significant difference. And that's really important because it gives them a sign that there's a light at the end of the tunnel. That's really scary, though, that your husband was so depleted after such a short period of time. And, and he was still trying to have healthy food as well as the junk. And there's, there's people out there that live like this every day and have for years, decades, maybe their whole life. That's that's. Well, I, I, found, I was in Australia once, I can remember, and um, I had a book that was being published the next day called The Real Life Diet, and I was going on TV to talk about it. And there was a, a childhood obesity study that was published the day before. And I can't remember the exact statistics, but it was a shocking number yeah. of we, Australian we, children. That were we were obese. number one. We were the number one childhood obese nation. Some of them were so fat they couldn't even get out the chair. And I couldn't work it out. I thought, wow, and you've got this amazing climate and you've got so much open space and people can get out and exercise and so on. How could that possibly happen? And I think that's the, the root cause of all of this is that none of us are taught about we're born with this body, but we don't have a manual. And no one really understands what they're supposed to do to keep themselves in good shape. And as women, we're giving out all the time. We do. I know myself, I had four children. I ran an advisory service. I wrote all these books. I didn't have any time for myself except when I fell on my face and had to stop. And so I'm, I think it's for women going through perimenopause, which is the eight years leading up to menopause, it's really important for them to learn how to meet their needs and it stops them falling into the black hole of menopause. And once they're armed with the knowledge, they've got that for the whole of their lives. Yeah. And that's why I just feel passionately that everyone needs to know that, about this information. Yeah. And that, as you mentioned, women are such key role models. If you fix the woman up, she will generally fix the rest of the family up. It may start yeah. that she's cooking two meals, one for her, one for the rest of the family, but eventually the rest of the family will go, that smells good. That looks good. Can I try that? When you cook that, can I have that? And then slowly but surely, hopefully the, the whole family comes on board and it's just that knock-on effect of, you know, you've started that domino. The first one's fallen and then the rest carry on and you've you've improved so many yeah, people. Yeah, I always say that the woman is the nutritional head of the household 
Um, so that's a similar thing. Um, in fact, on our program, a lot of the meals can, can be shared with the family. They're not unusual in particular. And if you hate cooking, there's loads of fast options so that you don't have to spend time and be a slave in the kitchen. Equally, if you love cooking, there's recipes and menu plans. So there's something in there for everybody, no matter what you like to do or what you like to eat. There's a whole section in there for vegans and vegetarians, as well as people who eat fish and meat. Hmm. Okay, let's move on to week three. Okay, week three is Mother Nature's estrogen and helping people to understand that if you fill the receptor sites with naturally occurring estrogen, you can fool your brain into thinking you've got normal circulating estrogen. And that's a really interesting concept because what's happening in your body, the reason you have the hot flushes and the night sweats is the brain is trying to kickstart your ovaries back into function. It doesn't understand that that's not going to happen anytime soon because we're living so much longer than we used to. So by taking naturally occurring estrogen little and often, because the receptor sites don't stay full that long, you can literally fool the brain. And it's a good thing to do as well, because when you've got empty estrogen receptor sites, what tends to happen is the body is so hungry for estrogen, it will hunt around for any old estrogen. And the environmental estrogen, the xenoestrogens, which are come in toxic waste and pollution and plastic and so on, will literally jump into that space and can be harmful. That can increase the risk of breast cancer and other things as well. So this is not just a nice idea. If you had a race between hormone replacement therapy, Mother Nature's estrogen, and these environmental estrogens, Mother Nature's estrogen would win. It jumps into the receptor site, seals off the space so that nothing else can get in there. And it moderates estrogen. So if you've got things like fibroids and cysts and endometriosis, It helps to shut off the blood supply to those. So that's good too. And if you've got low levels of estrogen because you're going through menopause, then it raises them to an optimum level. And your brain just thinks normal service has resumed and it doesn't have to keep giving you these equivalent of electric shocks that try to wake up your ovaries, which is what the hot flushes feel like sometimes. It just, you get this kind of electric jolt and uh, it can like almost like an aura makes you feel so weird. But that literally turns off within the space of a matter of weeks once you get your body into better shape. And so that's what we're focusing on in that week. So then we move on to week four. Week four, we're talking about nutritional supplements. And nutritional supplements, it's really important that people understand That research shows that not all pretty packets are equal to each other and that many of the packets out there don't even contain what they say on the label and they're not standardized in the slightest. And that's really important. So we were once asked to recommend a product that was supposedly contained 39 milligrams of what are known as isoflavones, these naturally occurring estrogens. And I was busily asking for the research. At the time, I went off to the US from the UK to a conference And I met up with some researchers and I was moaning about the fact that there's all these new isoflavone supplements and I haven't got a clue what's really in them or what really works. And they smiled at each other and said, shall we share our new medical paper with her? So they'd just done a study by coincidence where an independent analysis on 40 products to check what was in them. And out of the 40, only two of them contained what they said on the label. And the one that supposedly had the 39 milligrams of isoflavones contained one milligram. And I just felt so angry. I just, and which is why I make a, a, a policy of keeping up to date with all the new research on supplements and bring together everything that's being tried and tested and add it into our program. So, and there's new research, even this year, there's been new research published as I was writing the book. I had to keep changing things, and I'm sure that will go on and I'll make some changes to new additions. Or we've got um, a midlife refuel club on our website, so we have, I can put new research in there as well so that people can get the benefit of it so I think that is it's really important to um, understand that Um, I actually think it's very exciting that there's new research coming out all the time because there never used to be that much research on natural products or vitamins and minerals it was all on pharmaceuticals and now um so women that listened to last week's podcast where I was talking about saffron 
a PubMed search found 99 entries on saffron and depression. Okay, a lot of some of them were meta analysis, they weren't all research. But yeah. isn't that exciting that there was 99 entries on saffron and depression? Now, admittedly, there was only one on saffron and hot flushes. But that's right. that's the start. Like, hopefully, give us 12 months or 24 months, I might go back and there might be 20 on saffron and hot flushes. Yeah. But it's, I, I'm loving the amount of natural products that are actually being researched. So it could be foods. It can be um, vitamins and minerals. It can be herbs. It's things that weren't traditionally tested as often. And, and lifestyle as well. There's different yes. things like cognitive Meditation, therapy, yeah. yoga, acupuncture. I mean, there's just so many different things. Cranial osteopathy, the list goes on and on. And, it, and so it's really a question of the women familiarizing themselves with all the different tools and then finding out what works for them. Exactly. Because it is very individual. Not everyone goes through this in the same way. Yeah, and I guess that's a benefit of going through it now is that we have more knowledge now yes. and um, that we do have online, for practitioners anyway, there's online resource, resources like PubMed where you can yes. just jump on and have a quick look and see what the research is saying versus the old day you might have spent a week in the library to see what I, I can get in like 20 <laughs> minutes on the internet. It's, I'm, I'm excited by that. Yes, I am too actually. I, I love that. And because you don't always know everything, you know, and, and people come into our group and they may ask a question um, about anything. And if I don't know the answer, I always go to PubMed and have a quick look around there. And you know, within, as you say, a matter of minutes, whether this has got legs or not, and whether the science shows it helps. And so it is a, changing all the time. That's the difference between us and the average woman is that we go to the research. We have resources yes. like PubMed that we can go to versus women looking on Dr. Google. So you really do need to look at where your information is coming from. Um, I was asked on a Facebook group about an, an article and I disagreed with five of the three of the five points. And what I said to the lady was, when you go down and look at it, it was written by a journalist. It was written by somebody with no background in health. You really have to watch where you're sourcing your information from. And I, I love that there are resources and there are people like you and I out there who do go to the research and we break it down and we put it in understandable English for, for the other women. Yes. And yeah, and I, as you say, it's ever evolving. And I think that's important to to have an open mind and almost a student mind so that you're looking at this research all the time and able to pass on the new, what the new findings are. Yeah. Because sometimes you sometimes it's confusing. You have I can remember in the old days with um PMS, there were there was this does vitamin B six help? Because at one point they said, oh, B B6 is the be all and end all. But actually when we reviewed the literature, I think there were 13 studies and six of them said it worked, six of them said it didn't work. And the last one said that there was no evidence to support it whatsoever. <laughs> so it was just, you know, you have to look at the research and then you have to think about, well, are all studies equal? Um, not necessarily. So it, it's not just a question of, seeing if there's a study, as you said, with the saffron, you know, it's got to be sustainable in the long term. And so, and the other thing too, is that with these supplements is that they have to be shown to be safe as well, because if you're influencing your hormone function in your body, the last thing you want is an overgrowth of the lining in your uterus mm -hmm. or lumpy breasts. And so it's really, from my perspective, I want to satisfy myself that what I'm recommending is going to be safe as well as a good investment. Absolutely. So getting back to the book, I think we're up to week five. Yeah, week five is um, different. We're looking at sex. We're looking at libido and things like vaginal dryness. We're looking at stress, which with COVID in the air is uh, obviously very relevant at the moment and sleep. So those are the main things um, I'm looking at there. And obviously each one of those is a project in itself because sometimes women are affected by all of those things and other times maybe just one of those things. So it's just, again, this, as you go through the book, at the back of the book, I've got all the 
diaries and there's a place where you can keep notes. So as you work out what your nutritional deficiencies are likely to be, or as, you, as I mentioned, the recommendations for different symptoms, then they make a note and eventually devise their own program. So it's like, for example, with our six week program, people fill in a questionnaire and a diet diary, and then we tailor make the program for them. So for someone who's suffering moderately to severely, then they're going to need probably some extra help, as you know, with when you see your one to one patients. But for a lot of women who are suffering mildly to moderately, or they're just coming into perimenopause, they can manage by themselves. And that's, I think, where a book like this comes into its own, because women can dip into it. You don't have to necessarily read it from cover to cover. But if you go through the six weeks, that will give you all the information you need to manage your symptoms. And then after that, we're looking at the longer term, things like osteoporosis, heart disease, lifestyle, and how we just stay in the driving seat in the long term. Sounds good so to I me. I should say, that one thing I probably would like to say on, um, I mean, stress, obviously, we've got lots of coping skills with stress and we teach people to boost immunity and so on, which is good at the moment. Sleep is very often disturbed by too much caffeine and alcohol. Uh, it's also when you've got low levels of nutrients, your body, you're not able to go into the restful sleep in the same way and also if you've got low levels of estrogen in your body then your brain is going to be waking you up sending these electric shocks through your system waking you in the night and maybe your urethra and your bladder get thin as well so you have to keep getting up to pee but if you take into your body naturally occurring estrogen you can actually plump up those tissues again and the research shows very clearly that vaginal dryness for example you can get back the elasticity and the mucus in the vagina and you can also get back to feeling sexy again. So you feel switched on from the waist downwards as opposed to switched off. So over time, because it's not, again, magic, but over a matter of months, you can actually get back to having comfortable relationship again. If it's been too painful before, you get the desire back again. And you start to feel like you're strutting your stuff rather than feeling that this is a really bad scene and you're worried about what the future holds for you and your relationship. Mm. I think it also comes back to this is a, a transition that has an end. And when what I, what I find, and it's also in the research as well, that post-menopause, you have a better sex life and happier moods. That That's really exciting too, that it's not this is all doom and gloom. It's like, yes, you might be having a rough trot, but there is definitely a light at the end of the tunnel and an exciting, like who doesn't want a great sex life? Who doesn't want to feel happier? That this is all possible. It's not the end. It's not doom and gloom. It's not let's shut up shop and be done. No, but having, having said that though, that's possible as long as women take a proactive stance and they learn to meet their needs. If they don't, I've had patients in their 70s who are still, look, they're still having flushes, they're feeling achy, and they've got arthritis and all sorts of things that can't think straight. They've had to leave the workplace. It, it, it doesn't have to be downhill if you learn how to meet your needs. And I think yeah. the difference between learning how to meet your needs and not is like the difference between night and day. Definitely. And so it is, this is something... We're, as women, we're so used to nurturing everybody else. We've got to learn that there's, there's got to be a period in our lives. Hopefully, we're going to make that in our 40s. So instead of dreading menopause and thinking it's the end of life as we knew it, we're going to welcome the fact that we can have a midlife refuel. And we give ourselves permission to nurture ourselves for a few months in our 40s and learn to meet our needs so that we can actually feel really well again. And yeah. that, I think there's just no substitute for that because it helps us to be a better version of ourselves. And it also helps to increase productivity. We did a, a, our own survey on 1,000 women in the workplace, and 84% of them said that they felt that their, their productivity was affected adversely for more than eight days a month. And that costs industry a fortune. But also it means that industry often loses a lot of talent because the women get so embarrassed and feel so unable to perform in the workplace that they quietly creep off and either go and do a lesser job or they leave work altogether. And it shouldn't have to be like that. We've got all this wisdom by the time we get to our midlife that we need. To, and heaven knows this planet needs all the wisdom it can get right now. 
to be sustainable. And so we need all these wise women to be in really good shape so that they can help to make a difference. And so I feel that this whole global mission we have on menopause is going to have a big ripple effect and will help not just the woman herself, but will also help her family, her relationships, her work life and the planet at large. Couldn't agree more. All right. So then we've got one final chapter left, which is week six. Yep. Week six, we're talking about memory because, uh, again, the research very strongly shows that you can improve both short and long term memory and cognitive function. And that's important because we know that if you start losing your mind and you lose the thread of what you're saying mid sentence, it can be very, very scary and it can make people feel that they've got dementia. Um, One of the women, because I've got lots of case stories throughout the book, and one of the women who came and gave me her story for the book, but also in the film that we made, which is on our website, is someone called Professor Jo Brewis. And she was one of the co-authors of the government report on menopause in the workplace in the UK a few years ago. And I met her at a conference and she was saying that she felt very scared because both her parents had dementia and she felt that she had earlier Alzheimer's and she also had acne on her face for the first time in her life she was constipated and very tired and feeling quite depressed about the whole thing so I said well come on our program and just see how you do and which she did and within the space of a couple of months her symptoms had just gone completely and eventually not just her skin was clear her guts were working her brain was functioning normally And eventually she, instead of leaving the workplace, which is what she was feeling, she had no alternative but to do that. She was actually made head of department at her university. So those are just, you know, there's just, there are other stories in the book about, um, there's another woman who's a midwife who she had to leave work because she just could not function. She was in terrible, she basically described herself as a mental breakdown. And I taught, she was an old PMS patient of mine, actually, and she came back at the time of menopause and just helped her have the refuel. And now she's delivering babies like there's no tomorrow. And she's just really excited about her career. And she's got two little grandchildren and she's able to be hands on with them as well. And it's a whole good story as opposed to someone who's just gone to seed and given up. And I think that's it's just so important that people understand that these things are really possible. Anyway, I'm getting off the track. So memory, healthy hair is another thing because a lot of us have thinning hair when we get to menopause because our iron stores are low, maybe other nutrients are low. We've got low levels of estrogen. And so we're not producing the same amount of hair follicles. And um, sometimes our hair gets dull and brittle as well. So it's about that. And sugar cravings, I think was the last one. Oh no, staying positive. Was, uh, and we do cope with cravings as well. Um, so because a lot of people feel like they're the slave to their cravings, you know, they're driven out after dark to uh, get bars of chocolate to feed their face because they've got low levels of chromium, magnesium and B vitamins. And when we get those back into good shape, their cravings disappear. And then finally, staying positive because it's all about mindset and feeling when women get to the end of the program and they're feeling so much better because in the beginning they're so consumed by their symptoms they can't really think about much else suddenly the symptoms are gone and now they've got a blank canvas so it's about what do they put on that canvas how do they keep themselves feeling really positive and focused on how they'd like the next chapter of their life to be because it's really you're the architect of your own life once you're feeling really well you can do whatever you please and you can help yourself you can help other people and we try and get people doing things like random acts of kindness and all sorts of things that can make them feel better as well as um and somewhere along the line i think we've missed out exercise and relaxation because that's in there too um so that's in, i can't remember which week that's in i think it's in week five um but it's really and i've got other sections in the book on that but certainly in the program we're looking at either i in one of my tv series was called use it or lose it and it was about joint health so if you don't actually and and if you're feeling tired and you're not sleeping and you're anxious and so on you're not going to be feeling like exercising so it's just getting them up out the chair maybe doing some dancing to your favorite music and starting to get active again because that has such a profound effect it helps to 
speed up the metabolism. That's the rate at which your body ticks over. So it helps to gobble up the fat that's collecting around your middle. It helps to oxygenate your brain so you can think straight. And it just helps you to release endorphins, those lovely feel-good hormones, which make you feel so much better mood-wise than you have been feeling. So that's the exercise part of it. And then relaxation is important as well because formal relaxation has been shown to reduce hot flushes by 50 to 60 percent so we try and teach women how to do if not meditation because sometimes people can't do that there are apps that you can use that have been created by neuroscientists that take you into a really deep relaxed state and bring you out again so that you feel almost like your phone when it's been plugged in to the mains you feel like you've had a recharge (laughs) and it helps to rewire your brain and it helps to keep your flushes and your night sweats under control. And so, again, it's taking time out to do that for yourselves. And even I hear all these women saying, oh, I'm too busy. I can't do that. But actually, it's really important to do that because you get the time back and more when you're feeling better. And so you can be more clear thinking, more productive. You can achieve so much more in the hours that you've got left than you would if you were just overwhelmed by your symptoms. So all of those things. So the, the, the program is uh, basically getting yourself into really good nutritional shape, learning how to do that, uh, taking out of your diet things that are going to impede the absorption in the short term of nutrients. So certain things in your diet and in your food and drink will lock onto nutrients and stop them from being absorbed. And that's the last thing you want at this point. Taking naturally occurring estrogen so that you fool the brain into thinking you've got normal circulating estrogen again because the naturally occurring estrogen, the isoflavones, look so similar to what's called estradiol, which is the estrogen we have before menopause. When you look at it under a microscope, you can it is different, but it's like spot the difference. You can't really, and so you can fool the brain that way. And so that's the um, the next part of the program, and then taking the right supplements for your symptom set and doing some exercise and relaxation. So it's not rocket science, it's just working out what works for you and then being patient and holding yourself accountable. So you can either buddy up with a friend if you're not having extra hands-on help from someone like you or me. Um, You can just buddy up with a friend, fill in your diaries so that you've got all your symptoms logged in with a symptom score so that you can actually see that we, we give a score to severe symptoms of three and zero is none. So we're trying to get the threes and the twos down to one and then none. And so you can actually see yourself making progress as you go through this process. And it's uh, a once in a lifetime education, but that knowledge will stay with you for the rest of your life. Mm. And will also support your family and friends. Exactly. Because you can be a better version of yourself. So if you're not in good shape, you're not going to be there for them. And we know that uh, I can, one of the women that always will stick in my mind was a woman who'd been taking hormone replacement therapy for 10 years. She put, I think, two stone on in weight, masses of weight she gained. Um, She was on the point of getting divorced. Her vagina, she described as a burning fireball. She could hardly sit down, let alone have sex. And she was so depressed, she was feeling suicidal. And by the time we finished with her, she was, well, she was having comfortable sex within three months. She was back to feeling really well and had absolutely no symptoms whatsoever. And she then decided that she would stop doing what she'd been doing. She'd been signed off at work anyway, but she didn't want to carry on doing what she was doing. And she reinvented herself and she became a healer. And And now she's helping out there, helping so many other people. And it's so heartwarming to see... The, this ripple effect of this simple process of having a midlife refuel. Well, I know I was very lucky to get an advanced copy of your book. When is the release date? 5th of January. People can actually buy advanced copies of it. The new year. New, yes. new year, new you. Exactly, exactly. And in fact, that's exactly what we call it. So um, it is important. And I think because it's been... 2020 has been such a strange year for many of us. You know, it's been a difficult year for everybody in some way. And so I think next year there'll be a light at the end of the tunnel, hopefully. And we need to spend the next few months getting ourselves into really good shape and getting ourselves ready to experience the new world 
when it opens up again and we can all start traveling and doing all the things that we were doing before in an unrestricted way. But it gives us a, a, a bit of time to pause and take breath and look at ourselves under the microscope and think, well, what do I need to do? Because not only does it help you to feel better so that you have clarity of mind and you feel calm and cool and in charge of your thermometer, but also, <clears throat> excuse me, the research shows that it helps to make you look better. So, for example, the naturally caring estrogen, the research shows that even in the matter of about 12 weeks, it reduces the depths of wrinkles on your face those things I call wisdom stripes, but we don't always like them when we look in the mirror. And it does have a really positive effect on our skin, our hair and our nails as well. So you look more youthful. So it's a bit like turning back your biological clock. And that's really important because it helps with your self-esteem. It helps you to feel that you get your mojo back again and you can get on with life in a really enjoyable way, as opposed to feeling crippled by all your symptoms and scared about what the future may hold. This isn't the dress rehearsal. This is the real thing, do you know? And we really do need to think about how do we want to spend our life and not be crippled with these unnecessary symptoms and suffering when the science very much shows that we can overcome them. It's just finding out how to meet our needs and how to get the right program for our symptom set so that we can get ourselves back into the driving seat feeling really good again or better than you can remember because the thing is you go downhill so slowly you don't realize how far down you've gone until you come back up again. Do you know, if you had a couple of babies and you breastfed and so on, it becomes new normal that you're firing on two cylinders instead of four. So once you get back to feeling really well again, you may be surprised at how amazing you can actually feel. Well, on that note, thank you so much for your time. Um, we were talking about manage your menopause naturally. By Marion Stewart. I cannot thank you enough for, for giving us some of your precious time today and I wish you all the best with your book launch. Thank you so much and if anyone wants help they're welcome to come to our website it's just marionstewart.com and that's marion m-a-r-y-o-n stewart s-t-e-w-a-r-t.com and we have um, a whatsapp group as well if people need help then as you say there's lots of choices about how to get help and they just need to find what they feel is going to work best for them but don't sit there suffering silently. No. Well, until next week, ladies, bye for now. Thank you for listening to Menopause Natural Solutions. This podcast contains general information about menopause. It is provided as a guide and it is not intended to replace medical advice. Opinions of guests are their own, and this podcast does not endorse or accept responsibility for statements made by guests. If you have enjoyed today's episode, please leave a rating and review.